there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be Bible journaling in Isaiah with these beautiful crocuses done in a rather vintage style using some negative painting. We'll talk about that. And the verse, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. And I think we need some flowers in our lives. So I have a sketch for you that you can download. There's a link in the description for it. And by the way, I recently have fixed all the links in the descriptions of my videos. Everything went belly up for a while. So if there's a past one where I said there was a sketch and you were disappointed that the link didn't work, it should work now. So please do go check that out if you had any old videos that you wanted to see the sketches for. The painting for this starts out really simple. This is blobby painting. I'm painting the yellow and the purple over two of the flowers that I just wanted to have them be yellow and purple, but I'm only going to paint around the areas that I want to be white, white. So I'm using my brush to go around them. I'm using a number 12 brush. It's a big one. So I get lots of coverage and the big brush also discourages me from getting too tight with the watercoloring. And for this first pass, it does need to be pretty loose except for around the areas you want to be white. So the third crocus up here, you can make it whatever color you want, but I wanted it to be white. So I'm going to paint around it in order to define the white areas. That's the only way you can paint white unless you're using acrylics and you know actively painting a white flower on top of something. So I'm just going around that real carefully, but letting all the other colors blend and mush together. And after each one of these sections is done before it's dried, I'm going to take a baby wipe and tap off some of the color so that if there's any thick blobs or anything, those can be gotten rid of and it's adding texture to it and blending the colors a little bit as well. These two colors are yellow and purple. And if you've seen any of my color theory videos or when I've talked about it at all, this is complementary colors. And notice that sometimes those colors end up turning brownish because they're op opposite on the color wheel, the purple and the yellow. And any color combination that is opposite on the color wheel will turn into a neutral. So you need to be careful of that. But I wanted a vintage look anyway, so it was perfect for this. I used some of the color that was left on my baby wipe to add just a little bit of kind of messiness to the banner so it'll feel a little more vintage. And that added it without having to paint any excess color into it. And then the other page I just covered with paint and used the same baby wipe technique to wipe off the color. There's just something about having a two page spread that makes my heart happy because I open that to that page when I'm reading through and it just feels like it's one big unified page. If any areas are too dark to read, just take another baby wipe and dab off more of the color on it or from it, and then that will lighten it up. Now between any of these layers, dry it completely and then iron it. If you just put a piece of computer paper above and below it and iron it for you know 10 seconds or so on a hot iron, that is enough to flatten it out some. It doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it easier to work with. So that's what I am going to be doing. This first pass that I started working on this crocus did not go so well because the paint that I used was so thin that it really didn't do anything. So I lightened some of the areas where the paint had globbed on, but I figured I'll go back to that in a, a future step. So I'm going to move on instead to one of the other flowers, mixing together some yellow, a little bit of orange and stuff to make a richer orange color. And in between the petals, in the places where the petal goes down to the center of the flower is the darkest place. So I'm putting dark color down there at the bottom of that little triangle and then using water to soften it as it goes out to the top edge. And this is called negative painting. So we're painting the negative area around an object in order to define it. And then I'm using a few strokes elsewhere in the flower to give it a little definition, but I'm not trying to outline the whole thing or anything. I just want enough to give the flower a little bit of form. And you can do that with some of the inner petals that are on the other opposite side of the flower. 
But the more that you add to those other areas, the more you define like that big yellow petal in the front starts to really crisp up when you add color in behind it. I'm gonna also add some on the outside of the flower. And don't go around the whole thing and make it look like a big outline. You wanna blend that color in as best you can. I'll go in and add some more color to that area later. But making this look like it's seamless and blends right into the background is really nice. I mixed up some thicker purple then to use for the purple crocus. And this is working much better and getting more definition and adding, again, those little lines, those little stripes in the flower petals themselves. And uh, just adding more of that. Decided to add a little more to that circle because I'm gonna use a white pen to make the ampersand on my page, but you can make that any color you would like. If you wanna use a black pen, you might make a yellow circle. And then the greens. I started by mixing a dark green, and as soon as I did, I went, you know, I need to do my light green first. So rinse my brush, started again with a lighter green, and starting with the lighter green allows you to add negative painting with the darker green later, which is the reason that I realized I wanted to do that carefully. And I'm looking at where my pencil lines are so I can figure out where the stems of the flowers go in between the swirl of the banner because the banner is in front and then it goes behind and then it comes in front again. And so that gives you a little bit of that definition to make sure that the green is in between. I decided I wanted to add a little more richness to some areas of the background. And you can do this on the whole flowers as you, you go around adding just a little bit more on that the left and right side around that banner and look how much more white the banner looks because of the color around it. It's just the principle of contrast. The more contrast you have around something, the more it defines it. Even more than color, it's the contrast in between. So now that the lighter green has dried, I can go in with a darker green and start to specifically paint those little leaves that crocuses have. Now mine are probably a little on the small side as I'm looking at this now while watching watching it and recording the voiceover. They are probably more like grass. They, they do have very tiny, very thin leaves for crocus, but maybe not quite this small. But I'm painting them over top of all the other color that's there. So using a slightly thicker paint in a green is going to really help with that. I can use some of that green to also define some of the flowers. So I've got that white flower at the top. Putting some of these leaves behind it defines the petals so that they start to pop out more. You can see more of the definition than you could when the color behind was so light. And you can also add some of these grasses in between and all different kinds of things. And I'm dabbing off the edges just because the leaves started taking too much attention. I didn't want them to be the hero of this, the flowers are the star. So just use the baby wipe to remove a little color and then add more contrast here in the stems so that the stems have a little bit of a uh, little bit of definition in, in between them. And then added more of these leaves to the interior of the bouquet. And here's where you can cover any weird shapes that you got. If there's things that are messy, then just uh, go over top of that. And last but not least, the text. I'm using a Micron pen for the Rejoice, and then I'll use a white Uniball Signo pen for the ampersand. And there's plenty of room in that outside background for some nice pale journaling. I might do that in a pencil and, you know, just do some, some text journaling, writing in the, those areas. And that is about it for today. I hope some flowers made you smile and look forward to spring because it will be here. It's coming. I promise you it's, it's going to get here because yeah, spring is next. After winter, spring is coming. All right. I will see you guys again very soon. Take care. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.